You're watching the legal breakdown. So, Glenn, we've spoken about how Trump has been attacking Judge Mershon, that's the judge presiding over his Manhattan criminal trial, as well as his daughter. Now Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg is trying to make Trump regret that decision. Can you speak on what he's saying here? Yeah, District Attorney Alvin Bragg filed a letter with the court, with Judge Mershon, um, saying that in his opinion, in the opinion of the prosecution, the gag order that was previously issued by Judge Mershon was sort of broad enough to include the judge's family members. Now, Brian, you and I have talked about the gag order previously. I, I think it's a little bit vague. I think they may need to flesh it out a little bit. But as of right now, Alvin Bragg and his prosecutors are taking the position that um, Donald Trump is already prohibited from talking about the judge's family members. And we know in the last 24 hours, Donald Trump has posted over and over again about Judge Mershon's daughter. He has named her. He is obviously putting her in harm's way by sending the signal out to, to his supporters. Every time he names a perceived enemy, the message he's sending to his supporters is, get him, get her, and he's done it again. And now they're going to have to hash out exactly who is covered under Judge Mershon's gag order. And by the way, Trump filed his response. So what does that response say? Not surprisingly, his response said, not only is Judge Mershon's family not included in the terms of the original gag order, but we don't even think you should be permitted to modify it because, get ready for it, it would be election interference. It would be a violation of my First Amendment <laughs> right, if, right to free speech, et if, cetera, if he et can't... cetera. If he can't attack the daughter of the judge and try to sick his violent supporters on her, then, then how can we even have a legitimate election anyway? And what kind of a criminal justice system is it if the defendant who's on release in four felony cases can't endanger the lives of the witnesses against him, the prosecutors and their staff, the court and their staff, all of the jurors and the family members of all of those groups? I mean, what's the world coming to? Yeah, it's uh, you know if 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 we can't if we can't attack the the family members of judges then like is this even America anymore, Glenn? Who determines ultimately whether Judge Mershon and his daughter uh, are included in the gag order? Is that Judge Mershon himself? Yeah, Judge Mershon will take up this issue. I suspect he will either ask the parties for another round of formal briefing or he might set a status hearing, bring them back in, give them a few arguments, a, a few minutes to make their arguments clear. And then I have a feeling what you're going to see Judge Mershon do is maybe fine tune his gag order, maybe expand it to be more explicit of exactly who is included in the gag order and who's not. Well, what does he have to lose by going back and including his daughter or his family members in this gag order? I mean, he doesn't he doesn't give anything away by protecting his own family members. No, he has nothing to lose and everything to gain because, you know, the family members of a judge should be off limits. Um, the only thing I will say is if Judge Mershon does modify the gag order now and make it clearer and more explicit about his daughter, for example, being included, all that will mean is anything Donald Trump has said thus far can't be used as, as the basis of a violation of the gag order. But moving forward, obviously it could. Is there any reason that he wouldn't? I mean, is there any downside to going ahead and including family members or even including himself? Is it going to look like he's trying to to stifle Donald Trump's First Amendment rights by doing that? Is that is that on base here? The only downside is in the court of public opinion, which should not and I predict will not be Judge Mershon's concern. Now, right. according to some of what we've been reading, primarily in Donald Trump's posts, Judge Mershon's daughter is involved in you know, some kind of activity that involves supporting Democratic Democrat candidates. So Donald Trump will yell and scream that you see this whole thing is just a political witch hunt because they can go after me, but I can't criticize people who are supporting Democrats. Now, I, I think that's a BS argument. I don't think just because a judge's family member happens to be a Democrat rather than a Republican or happens to be involved in political activity in favor of Democrats that somehow that equates to a criminal defendant from a different political party being entitled to in attack and endanger the judge's family member. I mean, Brian, none of this makes any sense. We're like living in the upside down. 
Yeah, yeah. Glenn, is there any risk to Trump attacking the very judge who's presiding over this case? Like he did the same thing to Judge Ngoron in the E. Jean Carroll case, and that certainly didn't work out too well for him. But is there any, any real risk that he faces by virtue of levying these constant and personal attacks against the judge overseeing the case here? In theory, there's a lot of risk. In practice, it's an open question because Donald Trump, as you mentioned, in the case that was being presided over by Judge Ngoron, Donald Trump's uh, civil fraud trial in New York, um, Donald Trump incessantly attacked the judge's law clerk. Judge Ngoron put a, a gag order in place, prohibited him from doing it. He did it anyway, so Judge Ngoron imposed a couple of fines, I would say very modest fines, not the kind of monetary fines that would in any way deter or alter Donald Trump's behavior. In theory, however, if you violate the, uh, a court order, any court order, you could ultimately be held in criminal contempt. Now, let me tell you, that's far more likely to happen in a criminal prosecution, like Alvin Bragg's case, than it is in a civil case, Judge Ngoron's case. Um, so who knows? In theory, Donald Trump could be looking at spending some time in a jail cell if he continues to, to violate uh, Judge Mershon's order once modified. And, you know, but, but that's really more theoretical because, Brian, I don't think anybody, any prosecutor, any judge, any institution of government has shown that they have an appetite to apply the law to Donald Trump the way it should be applied and hold him accountable for his obviously reckless and often violence-inducing rhetoric. But in theory, Yes, he, you know, it could really come home to roost. And I know folks out there are thinking, okay, what about pretrial detention as a possible uh, punishment for him? And Gunn and I are actually going to do an episode specifically on that. So uh, if you want to see that episode, which is coming out tomorrow, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and we'll talk uh, specifically about that issue. Glenn, can you uh, discuss what the timeline is looking like here for this Manhattan criminal trial as it stands right now? Yeah, if there's any good news, Brian, and I'm always looking for the silver lining that is hiding behind the big, dark, orange cloud that is Donald Trump, the good news is Judge Mershon has affirmed a couple of times over this criminal trial will start on April 15th with jury selection. I am going to take him at his word. Interestingly, Donald Trump just filed a, a notice with Judge Cannon, his favorite judge, a judge he appointed to uh, the bench for the rest of her life. This is the Florida case involving his unlawful retention of classified documents, obstructing justice, and violating our nation's espionage laws. His lawyers just filed something with Judge Cannon saying, Judge, it looks like we're going to be in trial beginning April 15th, and we are likely to be in trial through, we would project, about the end of May. That's a bit of good news. Why do I say that? Because it looks like even Donald Trump's lawyers have resigned themselves to the fact that Donald Trump's first criminal prosecution, the first prosecution against the former president of the United States, will kick off in just a couple of weeks. And let's finish off with this, because I know that there's a lot of feeling of despair out there for those watching, like Donald Trump keeps getting away with it. I mean, you and I were very much hoping and expected Donald Trump's uh, D.C. trial to move forward, his classified documents trial to move forward, and maybe to some small degree the Fulton County trial. But it looks like right, as of right now, the only one that's certain to move forward prior to the election is going to be uh, this Manhattan criminal trial. So um, just in terms of like the... So just in terms of the significance still, not to get, not to fail to see the forest through the trees, the significance of Donald Trump standing trial in a criminal trial ahead of the November election. You know, Brian, it's a big deal. And it's a big deal not just because it's the first criminal trial against a former president of the United States, but it's a big deal because the charges in this case involve Donald Trump's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election to gain unfair advantage in that election, the case involves 34 felony counts of falsifying business records to cover up the fact that he made these hush money payments to silence playmates and porn stars to try to bury deeply damaging information from we the people, the American voters. Um, these charges, each one carries up to four years in prison. It's a class E felony under the laws of New York. It carries no mandatory time. What does that mean? 
it means that if he's convicted, Judge Mershon will have wide latitude to put him in prison for any number of years or to simply sentence him to probation, no jail time at all. I would bet on some jail time in the event of conviction on those 34 felony counts, but either way, it's a big deal. All right, well, we'll obviously stay on top of all of these trials and these prosecutions as they continue to move forward. For those watching right now, if you want to stay on top of this stuff, please make sure to subscribe. And that's inclusive of the episode that we're going to do tomorrow where we talk specifically about pretrial detention. Uh, I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.